Yo, what up guys? It's the Crypto Homie back at you with another video. Today we're going to talk about some exciting news regarding Goldman Sachs. So today on Twitter, I saw Tyler Wigavos tweet this article about Goldman Sachs. And he says, now Goldman Sachs is into Bitcoin. What about what and face what what about face from their don't buy Bitcoin report issued three months ago in May? Nice head fake, Vampire Squad. Squad. Well, I'm gonna go straight to the article. Uh, so the article is titled, Goldman names new head of digital assets in bet that blockchain is the future of financial markets. But before we dive into this, let's go back to 2017, when Goldman, like in an article from 2017 about Goldman Sachs, a Bitcoin price soars above 11,000 as central bankers seek to calm fears. And I scroll down, And then this is the part I wanted to, to mention. It says, the JP Morgan chief executive, Jamie Dimon, has described Bitcoin as worse than tulips in reference to a famous market bubble from the 1600s. Speaking in September, Dimon said the digital currency was a fraud that would ultimately blow up, adding it was only fit for use by drug dealers, murderers, and people living in places such as North Korea. So in just a short period of time, three years, they go from calling it, it's worse than the toll-up mania in the 1600s. It's only for drug dealers, murderers, and people living in places such as North Korea. They go from that to now their new head of digital assets is betting that blockchain is the future. Personally, I think they're just in it for the money. but there's some interesting quotes throughout this article. The first one I wanted to share is, oh, I passed it. Oh, it's right here. So in the next five to 10 years, you could see a financial system where all assets and liabilities are native to a blockchain with all transactions natively happening on chain, according to the McDermott. So what are you doing today in the physical world? you just do digitally, creating huge efficiencies. And that can be debt issuance, securitization, loan origination. Essentially, you'll have a digital finance market ecosystem. The options are pretty vast. I think there's a lot of like big jargon in there, but basically it just means that they're gonna get rid of the third party. You're no longer going to need banks. You're no longer gonna need the middleman to get what you need for you know, loans, you're going to, it's going to be more like a peer to peer. And I understand we already have stuff like that, but this is going to be more like a legit with a smart contract, peer to peer loans. Um, everything's going to be seen. It's all going to be public record. There's not going to be no hidden fees. Everything's going to be known and everything's going to be digital. More importantly, there's no pieces of paper. So moving on to the next part that I wanted to share that I thought was great about this article was the right here. So he mentions insecurities, finance, and repo. If you look at those markets, they're ripe for standardization, he said. There's a lot of legacy processes in the vast movement of collateral that makes them very cost inefficient. So by leveraging distributed ledger technology, you can standardize processes to manage collateral across the system and you have a much more efficient settlement process given the real time settlement i think something that's a takeaway from this i mean he says securities finance and repo i think all securities all stocks anything like that they're all going to be digitized they're going to be on some platform digitized they're all going to be backed up by a crypto or or something along the lines and he says real time settlement it's, it's crazy because with my Fidelity account, uh, like when I trade something, they make me wait two days, two trading days for it to clear. I think that's like kind of ridiculous. We live in 2020. It should be like this guy saying real-time settlement. So moving on, there was one more quote in here. No, there's, yeah, one more, two more. <laughs> so he says, 
we are exploring the commercial viability of creating our own fiat digital token, but it's early days as we continue to work through the potential use cases. So you're telling me Goldman Sachs, Jamie Dimon said that it was, it was worse than the, the tulip mania, and now they're exploring their own fiat digital token. Did you hear that right? Fiat digital token. Oh, don't worry, it's in the early phases. This is uh, fascinating. We'll see what comes out about that. And then the last takeaway from this article is we've definitely seen an uptick in internet across, an, an uptick in interest across some of our institutional clients who are exploring how they can participate in this space, he said. It definitely feels like there is a resurgence, a, a resurgence of interest in cryptocurrencies. Out of this whole article, besides the fact that they turned from no crypto to liking crypto, I think this is the biggest thing that we all have to look forward to. Think about it. He says institutional clients. Many claim that 2017, up to the 2017 run up to 20K was mainly retail. Institutions have billions and billions and billions and some have trillions of dollars so this is more than the you know thousands hundreds of thousands and millions that just people have so when you're talking billions and trillions this market could easily surpass one trillion dollars for like for the market cap because we peaked at around 830 830 so keep in mind if gold's market cap is around somewhere between eight and ten trillion if we think Bitcoin can realistically match that, you're talking a really high price for Bitcoin. So this is a, this is a big takeaway, seeing institutional clients coming in, into the crypto space and seeing an uptick in their interest. That is amazing. That's just, it's just what we need. Alrighty guys, that, that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video. Smash the like button if you liked it and subscribe for more contact. content. The Crypto Homie is signing out.